hello and welcome. thank you so much for your interest in learning more about the dietetic internship program here at the university of kansas medical center my name is dr. janine getz and i have the joy of being the program director uh, and am excited to share just a little bit with you um, about our program so if you haven't been to Kansas City, Kansas City is a wonderful place uh, to live, to work, to go to school. Um, there is just so much to do. It has kind of that big city feel, but it's not too big, hopefully. Um, so as you can see in, in this um, picture here, that is a picture of our downtown area. Uh, and the medical center is located about five to 10 minutes um, from the downtown area, um, right on the Missouri-Kansas border. Um, but we are located in Kansas. So just to give you um, kind of a big picture overview um, of our program, we are a fully accredited dietetic internship program and we participate in the spring only match. Um, we are now accredited for up to 18 interns and I'm excited to share with you we actually have two tracks now. Um, so between those two tracks we will be able to have 18 interns and our interns do complete this in a full time manner. So the two programs, um, we for those individuals that have not yet completed a master's program, we have a combined uh, master's with dietetic internship program. And this is going to be completed over the course of five semesters. So starting in the fall um, and um, on the second year graduating then in May. So 20 month program, um, during which time you would be completing 38 credit hours of graduate coursework. Eight of those hours are going to come from the supervised practice experience. Um, we do have a thesis and a non-thesis option that I'll talk about here in a minute. And you'll also be completing about 1,100 hours of supervised practice experience. And then for those individuals who already have a graduate degree, we also have a dietetic internship graduate certificate program option. Um, and so again, you have to have a master's degree um, as you come in. And this is going to be a little bit more condensed um, and completed across two semesters or nine months, um, taking 16 credit hours. Eight of those are going to be more didactic work where we've kind of interwoven some competencies but it's going to bring kind of what you've had at the undergraduate level up more to a graduate level. And then the other eight are, are involving that supervised practice experience, again, completing about 1,100 hours of supervised practice experience. Both tracks, um, we still have a medical nutrition therapy emphasis, but I will talk about here in the coming slides that we do have the ability to tailor rotations towards your interests. So even if MNT isn't where you see yourself going, um, um, we can try and get you um, many hours in the area that you do have interest. So um, in terms of supervised practice experiences, this is the breakdown of our rotations. Um, so we have uh, 450 hours related to clinical nutrition. We'll break those down into two different chunks. Um, we have about 30 hours in our interprofessional teaching clinics, 200 hours in community nutrition and in food and nutrition management, and then a practice area of interest um, a rotation where you get to design for about 120 hours and then through other simulations and case studies and other activities that we have throughout the year you get about a hundred additional hours we do have um, our, our students really like that they get to rank their preferences so I will tell you which rotations you'll be completing in a semester and all of the different sites that are willing to host at that time you get to um, rank those and then um, I do some magic and try and place everyone um, in their their ideal situation um, but we have over 50 different um, facilities here in the Kansas City area um, and we're always looking for additional recommendations as well so here is um, a little bit on the practice area of interest. So this is the culminating experience. This is a, a great one where you really get to take the lead in designing. You're basing it on your goals, what you hope to achieve, um, and really the sky's the limit. So long as we can get an affiliation agreement um, and we have someone that is willing and qualified to work with you, um, we can um, really have you go um, anywhere. For those that are doing the dietetic internship only track, you'll still be um, on campus taking classes at that time 
And so likely um, those individuals may complete this rotation here in the Kansas City area, but it wouldn't have to. Um, so there is flexibility. So what does a typical uh, week look like for our interns? So um, in, in, if we're looking at the combined MS dietetic internship program, again, this is completed across two years. That first year, you're going to be completing your supervised practice experience while taking graduate coursework. So in year one, in fall and spring semesters, Mondays are our class day, where they're all day together, and then Tuesday through Friday out at supervised practice experience. The third semester, that summer semester, is when you will complete your practice area of interest. Very flexible during the summer because we do have students that will travel outside of the Kansas City area. Um, and so um, classes, if you were to take them um, during the summer, are all online. Um, and then during the second year, you'll just be doing graduate coursework. Um, and we, we do classes on Monday and Wednesdays, and those are half days. So there's a lot more flexibility in what you can do during that second year. Most of our students have assistantships or they have a PRN position. Um, and, and so um, that, that second year is a little bit um, less intense in terms of coursework. In terms of the DI certificate then, again, completed across two semesters. Um, classes will also be on Mondays, um, likely just a half a day, and then Tuesday through Friday out doing supervised practice experience. And I should note, um, because we are condensing this and really trying to eliminate a semester that we have in the past, um, there is going to be some times where we're moving very quickly. And for instance, um, whereas our students typically get three to four weeks at winter break, we will, for those in this track, um, be coming back right after the new year to get you started so you can finish on time. Looking at the curriculum uh, for the combined MSDI program, um, so in fall and spring semester, you will have an MNT course that's basically going to elevate what you've had at the undergraduate level that will pair nicely with your clinical nutrition rotation. We have a management course. Um, a lot of our competencies are fulfilled within, um, within that course, both fall and spring semester. Um, in the fall, you'll take a nutrition counseling course to kind of bring everybody to a level playing field. We have an online public health nutrition course and then you take practicum with me that kind of rounds out your experience for the internship. So that's not only your supervised practice experience, um, but that is um, learning what other people are doing in their rotation, doing some projects that have we haven't fulfilled competencies for, um, bringing in speakers. Um, so you'll have um, three hours of practicum in that first semester. Um, and in the second semester, in addition to that M&T and management, you'll have a, a seminar course uh, where you're learning to um, really read and dissect a, a research article and then present and again practicum with me. During summer semester, uh, you will have a scientific writing course if you choose to do the thesis option. Um, and um, if not, you can move that to the fall semester. Um, for those people doing a non-thesis project, you'll take one three-hour elective. And during those last three semesters, at any point, you can take that elective. Um, during fall and spring semesters four and five, those are really the heavy uh, master's coursework. So you'll take biostatistics, research methods, and macronutrients, and that scientific writing course. Um, and then we have micronutrients and a practicum course there in that last semester where I'm gonna really work with you to prepare you for the RD exam. Um, and then we split up that thesis and non-thesis during those last uh, three semesters. And that gives you a total of 38 credit hours. So um, real briefly, differences between a thesis and a non-thesis. A thesis, we're looking at having you complete, really getting exposure to the full research process. Um, and um, so really from the get-go, getting to see, putting it through IRB, recruitment, actually be involved with intervention and data collection and then analysis. Um, because of this, we break this across those last three semesters. Um, you are going to be writing a written proposal. Um, 
um, and um, then collecting the data and then writing that up. Uh, so um, everyone does this. It's just that the thesis is, is much more uh, detailed. Um, and your oral exam, so everyone takes an oral exam um, to exit the program. Um, and uh, kind of as a benefit, that is a 30-minute exam as compared to the non-thesis where we have an hour. And then in terms of electives, for thesis, we have you take three credit hours of DN 899, and that's related to collecting um, your data. Um, so you have no outside electives other than that course. And then the non-thesis is really a splice of the research process. And so here, um, it may be that you're working on an existing research study and um, you're looking at what data are involved and you're carving out your own research question within that um, kind of a secondary research question. So maybe you are helping to administer 24-hour um, recalls and enter those so you come up with a research question related to the dietary intake of the population that you're working with um, and you're just working on that one aspect. And so um, non-thesis is time limited. It's a hundred hour project. And for that reason, oftentimes students can complete that in one semester or sometimes they divide that out across two semesters. And those students will take one three credit hour elective coursework um, during that master's program. And then for those doing the DI graduate certificate only, um, we do have eight hours of core work in here. And unfortunately, um, we, we tried our best to bring down the number of hours because we realized that you're coming in with a master's degree. We kept these because we felt these were really important to our program and we have a number of competencies that are fulfilled uh, within these courses. So therefore, um, with a graduate certificate program at KU Med Center, we cannot transfer in hours. Um, so these are eight hours that will be taken across those two semesters. And then the practicum, again, is just rounding out that experience and your supervised practice experience. And so um, that is a total of uh, 16 credit hours. So uh, then um, I have this wrong. Um, the DI then is completed in, in May, um, either of year one for the um, DI certificate uh, students and in May of the second year for the combined students. Um, so for those that um, complete um, the uh, master's program, you'll get not only uh, a master's degree, but a DI graduate certificate. Um, you will get a verification statement that then allows you to sit for the RD exam exam. Um, and then we will highly encourage you to take the exam shortly after finishing the program. So we will have work to prepare you. Um, and so likely, you know, July, August, um, being ready to take that exam. We're super proud of our students. They do an awesome job on the RD exam. Um, in the past five years, we have a 96.2 uh, first time pass rate and longstanding 100% uh, pass rate from first attempt. And we have a high retention rate as well. Our applications are due on February 15th, and we do the die-cast system, so you will go in there and submit your application. Um, remember that this is, um, for us, a three-part process. So you need to go into die-cast and fill out your application. You need to rank in D&D Digital, very important. Um, and then once we see that your application has been submitted, we will submit, send information as to how that you can complete the graduate school application at KU Medical Center. And that has to be done by March 15th. In terms of ranking applications, um, we have a committee um, that looks, and here is just kind of a breakdown of how we rank. Um, so we, we no longer require the GRE. Um, so for that reason, we have a little bit heavier on the academic performance. We realize that sometimes people um, have a rocky start, so we try and half of these points are going to come from your cumulative, and then we average um, your, your um, GPA for your um, science courses and your DPD performance professional courses, um, and we have a sliding scale and award points. So if we're looking at a 100-point scale, 40 of those points come from academic performance. We do require a minimum GPA of 3.0. We then um, have a sliding scale and we tally up how many work experience hours that you have. This does not have to be related to nutrition or dietetics. We're looking at transferable skills of being employed, uh, so 10% there. Then we're looking on a smaller scale at specifically nutrition and healthcare related experience that you have. 
another 10 points there. Um, looking at leadership and research. Um, so any um, it, leadership does not have to be related to, to nutrition, just showing those leadership skills and, and opportunities that you've had, um, as well as if you've had opportunity at the undergraduate level to be involved in research. Um, but if you have a whole bunch of leadership, you could get the points without having research and vice versa. We look at awards and honors and just count up how many merit-based awards and honors you have. We will hold a brief uh, virtual interview. Really, the goal is just to get to know you better. You can ask questions and, and make sure that you feel good about our program. Um, so 10 points will come from that, 10 points from your personal statement, and 5 points um, from your DICAST recommendation letters. So again, we take 18 interns, and these students come from all over because we do not have a DPD program here at KU Medical Center. We hope that you will consider if you're if we've piqued your interest and, and you'd like to learn more, um, we hope that you'll join us for one of our, our next virtual open houses um, that we have listed here. Feel free to reach out to me and I can send you that link to get signed up. Um, so to wrap up some highlights that I just want to to walk through again, I think that we have an outstanding program. Um, we have some unique features of being uniquely situated within an academic medical center, um, and, and that affords us many opportunities for interprofessional collaboration. Um, we are able to tailor rotations towards your interest. Um, everyone is going to complete the same projects, and we ensure that you're meeting the same competencies, but we can do it in an area that is of interest to you. Um, we do have a wonderful opportunity for interprofessional collaboration because we are uh, part of a medical center that has a school of medicine, school of nursing, and school of health professions. Um, we do have um, a, a great supply of RD study materials uh, for the exam. Um, for that reason, we, we, we hope to be able to provide those that you're not having to go out and have extra expense. Um, and we really work with you to prepare you for the RD exam and because of that we have really great success on the exam and we're continuously working to improve our program. So we hope you will consider uh, coming and joining us uh, to be a part of our next class. If you should have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me um, and I am happy to answer questions. Thank you so much.